The Fishing Paper Show is proudly brought to you by United Fisheries, bringing fresh fish to your plate. G'day, I'm Crimpy and welcome to the show where everything's a little bit fishy and the fish know more than the guests. Tonight on the show I track down a Marlborough Sounds de delicacy. We find tench titillating, now so try and say that when you're not sober, and some salmon secrets. But joining me tonight in the shed we have, uh, over on my far left, we we have Barnsley from Hamels. How are you going? You're becoming a regular on the show? Yes, yes I am. Thanks Daryl. Yep. Nice to have you along. And now a man who struggles to keep his fingers to himself. Steve Terry, good evening. Thank you. By the way, how is your mother-in-law? <laughs> and that brings us to uh, the perfect moment in the show where we introduce a new segment. When things go terribly wrong... Oh, ouch. Now look at that finger. That's a shocker. That finger there belongs to... Steve Terry, remember that? Still got that finger, yes. Now that must have been a wicked chastity bill. <laughs> Do you want to talk us through that? How, do, how, how does a man of your experience get find yourself in that position? Uh, 80 pound braid tangled, uh, catching on the bottom and just having my finger in the wrong place. And try, trying to pull it off? Just uh, uh, literally if I hadn't broken the line I would have lost my finger in a split second it was that quick. Was it, was it, very, was it very painful? I mean that looks like it was sort of like real wince factor. Ah uh, yes. And yeah. Did you cry? <laughs> No. no. You're, a, no, bra no, you're no. a brave man. Yeah, no, All right. it, was, it was quite Okay, brave. now you know, you know the rules. Welcome to the show. And uh, the first time on the show, you have to bring a present for the shed. Uh, hopefully you haven't, you haven't disappointed me tonight. Well, as you've clearly already indicated, you're a bit of a clown, so I thought this would be quite appropriate for this uh, <laughs> the show for you. So there we are. Fish and game. Thank you, Steve. Very appropriate. Now, I have here, and our viewers can have a guess. At, look at this, a close-up of this here. This is the ultimate fish-catching device. Guaranteed to catch you, well, literally thousands of fish. Can you work out what it is? Well, Steve, can you tell us? Uh, that's an electric fishing machine we use to salvage waterways when they dry up or uh, different survey work. So it basically uh, sends out an electrical pulse that uh, contracts and relaxes fish muscles and that in turn leads the fish to bend and swim out from under banks towards you and you net them and put them in the fish transporter and save so them. It doesn't harm them? No, no, it doesn't, no. So this is, in fact, your real gift to me tonight, is it? This is, yep. <laughs> to is just it, improve it? your fishing, I've heard a few rumours. So. <laughs> well, I'm sure it can't be legal to, if it's let loose in the uh, hands of the general no. public, but more of that in a moment. Uh, right now, we go to the Marlborough Sounds, where I track down a very good friend of mine. Now we're heading out to meet an old mate of mine, Bruce Turner. Now Bruce is a bit of a character, he's lived in the Marlborough Sounds all his life, but more importantly, he really knows his oyster. This region has become the hub of the burgeoning aquaculture industry in New Zealand. Harvesting is the beginning of what will turn into a long journey for the oyster. After processing in the nearby town of Blenheim, the shellfish will not rest until reaching their final destination in the restaurants of Japan. Well, Brucey, you've got an absolutely amazing spot here. Now, what, uh, tell us, what is the secret to growing a perfect oyster? The secret to growing a good oyster is uh, ho hopefully you can keep them clean from uh, any growth thrown over them. Are you? mine. <laughs> You're a modest wee man, aren't you? So, would you, are you uh, an advocate of the school of thought that says the less you do to seafood, the better it is? Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. No, no point washing them, washing all the goodness off them. And one last question, Bruce. Do you dream of oysters at night? Do you ever get sick of seeing the sight of them? <laughs> the amount of hours I work, <laughs> you, could, you couldn't stop dreaming about them. <laughs> nice oyster. Wow, look at that. It's 
some cultures this is considered not only having health properties, but it's a bit of an aphrodisiac. So you can either have them cooked, but my preference is raw, au natural. That's a mouthful. Yeah, that one's working already. The Marlborough Sound certainly provides a wealth of breathtaking scenery, and it's easy to see why those who come to live here simply never leave. During a quiet moment's reflection, I discovered that as well as food, inspiration comes easy in the sounds. Trust me, those oysters were good. They were very big, so you don't need too many of them, otherwise you're dangerous. Now it's time for our viewers' vids, vi viewers vid and some titillating tench. Oh, Raven. Is that a good one? It's pretty good. Solid. Send us your viewers' bits to PO Box 9001 Annisbrook Nelson or email us a YouTube link to crimpiedextra.co.nz. And coming up after the break, it's all about salmon, 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 and yet more salmon. Catch you shortly. Mm -hmm.